What is up you guys and of course welcome to another video from me Skyrender and today we're gonna talk about the review that came out from IGN. I woke up this morning, uh, I woke up really early, I had to go to work really early, so I was up 5am and um, when I went up I saw a lot of feed on my Twitter about the IGN review and I didn't really read into it, I just thought that alright I might get another chance to just shake it out, I really want to do that and uh, I went to my webpage just like this. Without that one, obviously, and um, went into IGN. Like, oh, ooh, still holds water. Hmm. All right. And I think I am like most people are here are, and not really get into this first part. I'll read that afterwards. I just want to see what the reviewer, reviewer thought of it. And um, I just went down here and was like, um, what? Seven dot eight. That seems like a very, very bad review, I mean, not bad review, but, you know, because it is a 7 there, and not just an 8.0, uh, it becomes, you know, like, you you review it as a 7, and obviously it's closer than 8, but, you know, you do that as a first reaction, it's really, it's really that reaction you get, and that's the big first main issue with review of this, is that, of course, because it gets a 7.8 and not an 8, it's not one of those top holder games, and then we see, like, the complaints. And yes, you know, you always want to look at this first. Like, oh, the plus side, glorious details, plus game content, some smart updates. Kind of flawed, I guess. But you don't you don't care about the good things. You want to know why did it not get a 10. And, you know, we're going to start with this. Like, <clears throat> really? Too much water? And it's not really, like... It's nothing you can grasp. Like, that is... You know, you if you are a Pokemon player, you know that Hoenn region is a water-filled world. It's a lot of islands, and it's the whole concept. And I can't really stress that enough. It is the concept of the game. And it's like complaining about Call of Duty having too much add-ons to their guns. Like, you just don't. You're thankful for the concept. You know, and it's not a bad concept. We have a lot of Pokemons, water Pokemons. I mean, I guess it's over 10% of all Pokemons are water Pokemons in some way or another with dual typing. So it seems like a very good idea. Way back in Ruby Sapphire, it seems like a very good idea to have a lot of water Pokemons in water. And a lot of great concept came from that. And now more than ever, I think now we have over 200, no, there are 130, I guess, something like that, water Pokemon. That means that there are a lot of grounds here to cover, which means it's not a bad idea to keep going with water. And Surf is still such a, like, it's str such a strong move that it, you cannot utilize that. And it's it's not a tentacle issue either like it was in Ruby or Red and, Red and Blue. It's it's not that again getting pescued by water Pokemon by any means. It just eats too much water. And reading through the review, you kind of get that she, or Kelly Plosh, has maybe not did not appreciate the end game and you know i can see that being a thing i really do but a complaint like too much water is it's too flawed because like i said it's it's a concept so if you want to get you know into details with the concept you kind of have to you have you have to grasp the idea you have to grasp why it's an issue it wasn't an issue because it was time consuming it wasn't an issue because yeah you see I don't know, which means that it's, and I can't really stress this enough, It's it becomes frustrating because you can't grasp it. Because, like I said, when it is a concept, you really you really have to indulge in it. And um, the water idea just seems, it seems weird to complain about. And too many HM, they introduced two more HM this time. Secret Power, which actually is a quite decent move, and Dive which I guess is not that good. But both moves, you know, that they got introduced in this generation was... Oh, oh it just gives me a headache. Because you don't complain about being able to use Fly. You don't complain about being able to use Surf. When you choose a team of six Pokemons, uh, if you want to go on adventure, you really take take away, or you take with you an HM Slave. You really do. It's two different things to complain about you know, when you're doing post-game stuff or doing an adventure on the field and when you're just going for uh, clear the game or just, you know, go ahead forward, 
it's two different things in Pokemon, and most Pokemon players are aware of this. And the reason I say most Pokemon players are aware of this is because I know a reviewer here in Sweden, which worked for one of the biggest ones called Level uh, here in Sweden, and he had a very good idea when it comes to how to review remakes. You have to treat the remakes as the people that are playing it, because the people that are gonna put or gonna buy the remake are the very same people who liked the original one, and you have to treat the game like that, which means that these guys, or obviously we that are playing this, grasp the concept. We do appreciate it. We knew how to play these games. And like I said, 7.8 is not necessarily a bad review, but had it been an 8.0, it might have actually not stung as much. And, you know, looking back at it, because I really feel that I am backlashing a lot here, and really, the overall review is actually really nice, and I like that she actually takes the time to, uh, you know, grasp, okay, oh, right, here is the, like, the main complaint. She do, like, surf and fly and are the best kind of HMs, and I really, I think that's a good one. And they dropped Flash, they dropped that years ago, though, didn't they? So that's kind of unnecessary, or rather feels like, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't go there. But what I wanted to get at is that she actually do mention the ability that Laudios is bringing, and uh, which is the, um, oh, the sore ability or something like that, that means that you can fly throughout the Hoenn, which is really nice, and she tra takes the time to comment that, but it still, it feels like this is still an issue, and ah, uh, and they weigh so high because are these things concept things really weighing so high that they take away two whole points? It really makes you wonder. And um, besides that, I think her execution of it is very good. She has a lot of things going for her. She has. He, she is very good at explaining what she did like about the game, and there are very few things she nitpicks about. And that is basically what it comes down to. If you don't have anything that you can, like, grasp or explain what is bad about the game, you kind of have to stick to your gun and make... <laughs> and really make the game fair. And um, I really don't think the explanation for what she likes about the game compares good with the overall review and the points. And I mean, I might be nitpicking, I know, but it's really frustrating when you cannot tell yourself that you like the game, but these things did annoy you. Like, oh, <laughs> it's, it just doesn't cut it. It really doesn't. And it feels so weird because of us, us people, of course, that grow up with uh, Ruby Sapphire or I was, I think I was 13 or 14. This was really the game I was really getting into because I really liked the concept. I liked everything about it. And she does say, say on the review that she played the older games. But I really wonder if she liked those games. And I'm, I'm not necessarily meaning that a bad thing. It just, it comes off as shallow when, if you know the concept of the game, why aren't you uh, enjoying it to the fullest and like it for what it is? And I guess this is my take on it, of course. And like I said, the thing that is the issue is that she is treating it like a standalone game as not, and not as a remake. Uh, a remake really need to be more... Uh, you have to be more delicate with it. You really have to treat it like an update for the original game and not an update for the series. Even though this game works like it, you should still treat it as a game that actually are... What is that now? 12 years old? And what have they done with it? What did they preserve? What did they keep going with it? And saying that surfing around the world and that the HMs is, is a big issue in the game, it really takes away a lot of the, um, of the creativity of the, uh, of the reviewer. Because one thing that should stand out is that she did not mention anything about the meta game, nothing about the new moves, and I get why she didn't do it. But that's if you're a Pokemon fan, that is kind of one you want to get into. What do they do that X didn't do? And that is barely mentioned here. And as a result, it just becomes like extremely shallow. And it's not necessarily Kelly Plush's fault. Um, I really think that IGN or Game Freak overall might have stressed this out. I mean, the person that I know got his review copy, I think, 
we're gonna be 10 days ago from now, roughly. So I don't think these guys got more time than he did. Also, if you're watching this, I want to review copy. I don't want to wait another week. <laughs> but yeah, that is not going to happen. But really, guys, I just want to comment it on my own. Like I said there, she should have treated it like a remake and not like a standalone game. And she shouldn't have given it a 7.8. I'm not meaning it like a bad thing. It's just when you have... She basically gave it 7.8, 7 which is closer to 80. But... You don't you don't look at it like that. You just don't. You treat it like a seven because that is the first one mentioned. So that's where I really like just seven zero to ten instead of like uh, zero to one hundred because you really have to force yourself. Is it above average seven? Then maybe it should be an eight. Or is it below an average seven? Then maybe it should have just seven. It when you, it kind of feels like a fade out when you do it like this, and it just. It looks really unprofessional. It really do. And uh, it makes a lot of people angry, obviously. Um, like me. Because I feel like this is a, such a shallow complaint for uh, taking away two points of it. It's it's nothing game-breaking within the game. And I really felt that she didn't treat it like the game it was. So I hope that you know her next review will be much better. I really believe that the people at IGN actually are good people and are professional about these things. It just, these kind of stress reviews really, it really shines through when they are half ass done. And I really feel that this one is definitely one of those. And RPGs are tough to review, but have more respect for the product to review. And I think it will pay it off better in the long run. So with that in mind, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, Wi-Fi battle will come up this day too. So stay tuned for that. And uh, thank you for watching really. So, with that, my guys, have a good day and take care. And, yeah, the sky's the limit, right? <laughs> take care, guys. Bye.